Uh, welcome to the St. Charles County Council uh, work session on March 26, 2018. Uh, an update on the IS department uh, will be given by a director of our IS, Simon. Please go ahead. Right. Thank you, members of the council, for giving me the time to explain, uh, give you a chance to understand what's going on in the department. Um, so this is the agenda I think we're trying to answer. Um, that's what the slides are based on. I think we had heard that IS was spending a lot of money. It was taking a lot of time. Uh, what is the plan? What is going on? Uh, and that's what you needed some information around. Right. Okay. So the last update was in October of 2016. And at that time, we had talked about doing three things. One was engaging with an external vendor. Uh, SSI is the name of the vendor we had selected um, to manage our infrastructure. Number two was to get into the cloud as fast as we could because the cloud offered us uh, speed and scalability that we couldn't uh, execute ourselves just because we have to order hardware, stand it up, make all the connections. With the cloud, you're absolved from having to do all of that. And the third part of it was because we got into the cloud, we could recover some costs from running our own backup data center that we do in Kansas City. So those are the three major objectives. In terms of what we've come in front of the council for approvals, this is the list that uh, is the highlights. It's not every single expense, but it's some of the larger expenses. And uh, I want to separate out which parts of the spend are actually the spend on the plan that we had talked about in October, which parts of the spend are just part of the normal day-to-day uh, annual activities of licenses that we pay. And then the gray section in November and December of last year is what I'm calling risk mitigation. And because it was taking us long enough to move into or execute on the plan, we had to take some steps to cover the risks because we couldn't, uh, we couldn't leave it unmitigated. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna try and do through the rest of the slides. <clears throat> So on the next slide, which is five, here's the amounts that were approved compared to the amounts that we've actually spent. Right? So that section one, the top three spends over there, correspond to the spend on what we call the plan. Right? SSI, moving into the cloud, getting out of Kansas City. And as you can as you can see from the graphs, very little has actually been spent of the amounts that have been approved. And that's everything in the box one. Does that make sense? Yes. The, uh, October 20th, 2016 presentation, what was the total amount that you said it would take to get to where we needed to be? Um, so we came up with some estimates in October, but in May of 17. So on the previous slide, I have what we came to council for in May of 17. Are you trying to match that with October of Was 16? it 1.9 million in, in that October presentation? Was that the total? Uh, I think it was 1.8 million on SSI, maybe. And Microsoft had its own separate spend, which is about 1.5 million. So when, when you did that presentation, the total fix was, let's say, uh, Three point whatever that is, three point four something like that. Yeah, if you add those together. Okay. But those were over multiple years, right? It's not all in one year. So the Microsoft spend was across two years, and the SSI spend was across three years. Okay. Okay. So back to s slide five, box one is how much we spent on the plan, and if you notice the Microsoft Cloud is only 2% of the approvals have been spent, and that's what's been holding us back. Uh, that's the reason for a lot of our angst, is because we can't get into the cloud fast enough. Box number two is back to the risks again, and, I, and I'll elaborate on that in the upcoming slides. So some of that has been spent. For example, the Dell SSI remediation, we came to you at the end of the year. Some of it, we are not going to spend, for example, the consultant on the engineering. So 
All these months have been approved but not spent. So why is it taking us a while to <coughs> execute? If we go to slide, um, the one that says schedule, mm -hmm. I don't have a slide number on that. It doesn't have a slide number on it. It does not? Right. It does not. Yeah. So it's the pretty one with green and blue and red. Uh, it looks like a schedule. Um, so the green tasks are the ones associated with the SSI uh, external provider. Right? The blue tasks are the ones around getting into the cloud. And across the top is when I came in front of council and asked for spends. So if you look between October of 16, when we first presented the plan, we didn't come till looks like March of 17 for the first approval on expenditures on the plan. Then in May of 17, we came again when we had better numbers around Microsoft and SSI. Uh, so there's some time that gets elapsed between when we, get, when we have a solution identified, get the approvals in place, get the bids in place, and before it comes to council. Right? And on the blue, in the blue section near the bottom, you see that long wait. It took six months for a vendor to actually install the circuit. Right? And when we work with these communication vendors, they always quote in between three and six month estimates for the implementation. Because it's a new circuit, they have to work with other vendors, you might have to dredge or dig up to install conduit. It's a multitude of reasons, and that's why they quote these long time frames before anything, before they give you an estimated date. In the red section below is where we start running into risk. So while we're waiting on these projects to execute, if you remember, we, we elected to keep two engineering resources uh, when we outsource to the managed service provider. In about October, one of the two found a better opportunity and gave us notice and said he was going to leave. Right? And that's when we came to you and said, can we get permission to go hire a consultant because we think it's going to be a lot faster to find a consultant to help stem the bleeding while we actually do something in the PAP to make our salaries a little more competitive. Right? In December of 17, the last remaining engineer also indicated that he was going to start looking. Right? So that puts a lot of pressure on us where our projects are not going fast enough, the engineers feel like they're overworked or they find better opportunities, and then <clears throat> they express what they want to do, which just increases the risk to the county. So if I look, if you flip back to the boxes, that box number two are all the great things on the slide number four, which is around risk mitigation. A lot of those expenditures were to cover what would happen if one or both, well, one engineer definitely did leave. What would happen if the second engineer were to leave? Right. So we went and got some talent to help us document it. We tried to get an engineer to come learn whatever he could to try and shore up the support of what was going on in addition to the, uh, working on the projects that we need to work on. I know that's a lot of information really quick. Uh, do you have any questions on that so far? No? Okay. So if we go to the next slide, uh, just to give you some context, while we're executing on what we call the plan and dealing with these challenges, this is the slide titled Departmental Demand, the ongoing projects versus completed projects. It should be slide number seven. Yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah. Good? Okay, so the completed projects on, on the right, are the, these are in 2017 in all the stuff the county still needs to happen to keep operating, right? 
the middle column, IS, is everything we think we need to get done so that we can get us to a better place. And then the left column is still the larger ongoing projects that are still going on that requires IS <coughs> attention. So I would love it if, if the situation were, here's some money, go execute on the plan, and then we went off into a cave and came back two years later and said, now the plan is done. But that's not reality, right? It, it, everything still has to run. The collector has to collect taxes. When their systems go bad, we are scrambling. The family arena runs events. When they have issues with concessions, we are scrambling. Prosecuting attorney is continuing to um, put cases in their paperless office, um, which is a system, and when that database gets too big and we can't do the backups, we're scrambling. So in addition to projects, in addition to working on the plan, there's ongoing fires, what we call them, emergencies, that everybody has to scramble and give attention to, because that's the most critical thing right then. Simon, when you came to the council on October 20th of 2016, was the 3.4, when you gave us a presentation, let's say it was 3.4 million for the, the complete package, was that a complete package? Was that a Was complete? that compl the complete project? Was that everything? Was that, was that on here you got uh, emergency operations, you got electronic medical, was that the whole package? No, no, it was just, uh, of the three initiatives I talked about at the start of the project, one is to get into the cloud, and one is to go to the external vendor. That's what that package was. The plan, what I call the plan is those three things that were the most critical for us to address. Everything else is new projects or new money. So emergency operations center, for example, all the spend associated with that is not in that 3.4. So it, would you consider, is the Emergency Operations Center, well, what, whatever deals with that, is that part of your department or is that part of communica Emergency Communications? I think the spend across, I know the, the, there was an overall 20 plus million dollar budget for that. I think the uh, Emergency Operations Center, in addition to that, has to buy some of their own equipment. And we, in addition to that, have to buy some of our own equipment. So if you remember, Councilman, the Center. For the emergency operations center, the 20 million actually builds the physical building. There's another 4.4 million on top of that that's always been in the capital budget related to outfitting the electronics in that building. And at the same time that all that was happening, emergency communications has scheduled a technology refresh that they had coming up. Shortly before they went in there, they rescheduled it so that it coincides with them going in there. So they'll have some own money of that, that they'll have to spend. And you'll start seeing that come up with a master memo that we're doing for you all so that there's a comprehensive explanation on top of the first of those spends that we request you all to approve. So that money related to emergency communications what is either in that department that because it's a special tax and it pays for the emergency communications department or it's part of the capital money that we explained to you all from the very beginning was part of the spend to build that building. So are you saying that 4.4 million would be part of the capital spend? It's, it's already programmed in those bonds that we did and in the capital budget. Okay. He has an underlying question he's getting to. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out on this, this that you did, is this, this is all, is this what you think is from the IS department? Is that? the bids that the council approved in 2016, 17, and part of 18. Just trying to figure out every time we get expenditures through IS, it just seems like it keeps growing and growing. And from according to what we figured, it's like been $7 million. And so, and if Simon's saying 3.4 million, that's what I'm trying to figure out is, is it's like, I think from our perspective is we, if it's coming out of, if it, it's, it's always says IS. And that's why I got, I called you that one time because it said it, it was confusing, right? But according to this spend, it's $7 million from uh, 2016. And it was, if that's the case, unless the numbers are, are crossing each other, well, Councilman, you have to realize that what the numbers that Simon's talking about here have to do with 
and, and I'm probably not going to use the exact right term since I was going to glare at me, but basically the platform that we're sitting on. I want to give that to them. So the, and the people who run that uh, at the engineering level, the IS engineering level. So that doesn't change the fact that we still have to pay Microsoft for every license we use. Well, I don't, Joanne. I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that. All I'm saying is, is this, this, this presentation here is, for me is not very helpful. I, I would rather see a spreadsheet that's got a spend on it, what it was spent on, and what is anticipated. Because this gives this presentation, unless Simon's going to get into it, which maybe he will. But um, can this, I call a pause for a second? Yeah, go ahead. So, do they have this? No, they don't. So it, no, that's what I was going to say. You got an extra there? one of those? Do you guys, are there more of those, John? Yes. Can you hand those down? Here's a couple of reasons why I think there's some confusion. And there could be. There could be. I don't right. deny that. Yeah. So, I just saw this, so correct me if I'm wrong. This is the total amount of all the bids that have been approved by council that IS has asked for, correct? Okay. Yes. So, if you go back to the color charted this one, Simon, if you go back to that color chart, right. here's where I think you're, so you're looking at this that has the 1.4 million and the 1.8 million that are listed on here that's been approved. But what he's saying is some of those, like the 1.4 million is a spend over two years. Um, the 1.820 million is a spend over three years. So in other words, uh, even though that's been approved, it has not all been spent because that expenditure is spread over 18, 19, 20 is where 20. they're going to be spending that money. All right. So even though it's approved in the bid, it hasn't actually been spent yet. So where you're looking at in that case, you're looking at almost two and a half million dollars that we've approved that he has not spent. Is that is that a, is that a, is that a correct statement? OK. Yeah. So you're. You're kind of double counting numbers. No, that's not, but then it would be that there would be a $7 million anticipated spend. Yes, over the course of three and a half years. Is that right? That's correct. But some of these costs in 17 will also duplicate again in 18. We buy PCs. We buy one-sixth of the entire PC fleet every year. Right. So, so if, part if of the thing that he's talking about with this and what we met about was the cost of moving from, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm talking out loud to figure out if I understand what I understand. When we all got together, we talked about the cost associated moving from housing our own in-house IT department, our own servers, um, and moving all of that to the cloud, not housing our own, it, as many people here, meaning those engineers and things wouldn't be housed here, right. that would be offset. Correct. So, that's just what the 3.4. What you have in this list is also stuff that we do on a daily basis that was never figured into that. So buying new computers that he's talking about is a completely different thing. Upgrading some of the software is something we'd have to do whether we had the engineers here or not. So I, I, think, I think we're kind of talking past each other with numbers, but I could be wrong. That's just how I'm understanding of how you can. That, that could be very true. I, Donna just put this, I, I asked this for tonight's meeting, but yeah. yeah. At least that's, that's kind of what I'm understanding from seeing this, and I'm open to anybody else's thoughts. I'm just saying that if, if I, I, when I remember the conversation, I remember the meeting we had, and so I would just like to know so I know what my level of expectations are, and I'm not trying to criticize anybody. I'm just saying that, all right, Simon, if you come up with a plan, which we had in 2016, that this is the plan, I want to completely understand the plan, and I want to know that we're following the plan. And so when we see a lot of expenditures coming across our desk, to me, I kind of start noticing it, and that's, I could be completely misunderstood. I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I don't understand this stuff real well, but I do understand when I see numbers come across our table all the time. So that's all I would like to know is what the plan is. Are we on track? Are we, getting, are we getting stuff done that we set a goal to get done? Right. And then what should our expectations be for the next year? Are we, gonna, are, we, are we in good shape? Are we not in good shape? Are we going to have to budget this much for in six months for something else? That's all I'm asking for is some kind of a layout so we can see where we're going. But I, I feel like we haven't been, I, I feel the council hasn't been given real good, a clear overview of what's going on. 
Okay, but you're interested in the overall spend of the department, not just the monies that we spent on that plan that we talked about in October of 2016. Well, I think for me, I don't know about these guys, for me, I get confused at the two, to be quite honest with you. I just want to know if what our capital plan is, like what we're going to do. What are we going to do to make things function properly? Okay, so here's our plan. Here's the outlay. You could call it capital. You could call it operation. Whatever it's going to be. Right. Just so we, because I guess this stuff would be separate than budget, right, Joanne? Is that correct? Well, you'll see these things in the budget, and that's that's what I was going to say. I think maybe that some of the confusion is. That, you know, when, like that, when Simon made that presentation, I think he tried to make the point of, I'm not really going to address the simple things that keeps the lights on every day, keeps the phone system working. Like, the very first thing on your list is provide the short tel telephone system software maintenance. Every phone on every desk in this county, with the exception of probably five through the whole government, runs off of a software system now. They're all voice over IP phones. They're not... You know, it's, it's not a PBX system or whatever they used to call them. Um, or a, you'll hear the term POTS line, a plain old telephone system line. They're not that anymore. It's a, it's a computer system. And while it's not update heavy compared to a lot of other computer systems, periodically you have to update the software to keep it working right. So at the, at the beginning of 16, in March of 16, he had to update the software on that. I don't think we ever would have thought about coming in and making a presentation on that to you all. And that may just be our ignorance about the level of detail, because that's almost in a sense like tuck pointing the building. You know, I mean, to, to keep the system running, you have to update software periodically or your systems won't run. Um, but if you need a complete layout of where these things fall, we can certainly do that too, and even or even take this three-year sample that you did and plug them in to where they are. Because then, what Simon was presenting to you on is there's like a platform that our system has to run on, as Councilman Elam said. So right now he's been buying physical servers, and he's been running that system. When you own your own servers, you have to own your own engineering staff, IT engineering staff, to service those servers. We can't buy that staff on the market. If you go out and look on websites for like Express Scripts, for um, Worldwide Technologies, for any, they can't buy those people right now. They are in such sor short supply. You know, if your kids want to know what jobs to go out and, and plan for to make a lot of money, IT architecture and engineering, you got a certain job coming out of school. And, and companies are going to work to recruit you and when you see places like Worldwide Technologies looking for those people, you can imagine how hard it is for us to attract them and keep them. Because we're not bonusing people at mid-year. We're not taking them on trips and that kind of thing. So he can't buy the staff on the market to service that. So moving into the cloud, which is an onerous thing all by itself, is the only way to maintain the level. Because otherwise, you can't have the connect system that the that the uh, election authority needs. You can't have the system that the collector and the assessor need. The, those all require a lot of platform, a lot of data usage, a lot of updates. And so I think that's really what Simon was addressing with you, is let's move that platform, and this is what it's going to cost to move it, and this is what the personnel bought on contract are going to cost us. But there's all kinds of other costs we have. So like. If, if a department comes forward right now, like electronic medical records and corrections and in public health, which allows us to then bill for um, vaccinations and stuff we're giving, that takes personnel and it costs software licenses and build-out costs. And those are individually budgeted in the capital budget. And they come before you every year for approval. But none of that was really in what he presented to you about that plan. That was all about what I call moving the platform and buying the personnel to support the basics of running the big system of IT structure that the county has. Does that make any sense? No, I, I do. I'm just trying to make sure that when we when you started your presentation in 2016 of October right. that we did you we had back here, mm -hmm. yeah, and that that 
the plan that we had, I, I guess more of a, a, a summary to see if we're on track and what our expectations are going to be for any, are all the expenditures, are we done with the expenditures? Or is it like Mike said that we're, we're paying as we go for three years or what, what exactly is the layout? So, Right, so um, we're actually behind on some of the expenditures for that. And because we are behind, that means we haven't expended the money. We haven't gotten where we need to be, right? Uh, and that so, was what he was trying to show you here. You approved these expenditures towards moving for the system, to the new system, and the gaps we had to fill. But he's not spent very much of that money because we've been delayed trying to get into the cloud. So do we have a target date now to move this to the cloud from our we have servers now? One last hurdle that we have to get past, and then he can start. He, he knows of. Yeah, so I, I should let you talk. We to have. Uh, we're working with Microsoft on one glitch in the system right now, um, related to how we sign on to the system. After that, we need about a month's worth of uh, configuration of the system, and then we can start migrating into the cloud. So. Obviously, I don't know when exactly that solution is going to be, but probably a year after we get the Microsoft glitch corrected out, we should be in the cloud. And how long do you fear the glitch is going to take? Do you have any idea? I'm hoping a <clears throat> few days. Uh, worst case should be a week. So oh, okay. um, no. we're talking 13 months right now, rough time frame. 13 months from now? Correct. Okay. Be fully in the cloud. So if we lost our two engineers, how are we handling things in the meantime? Um, so uh, up on the agenda today is actually a bill that allows us to uh, move the position outside the Merit Commission and, and increase the salaries. We have an engineer that we've targeted that as soon as the bill gets approved this evening, we can make them an offer. So we are close to refilling one of the positions. Is this a, a temporary position? No, this is a full time. Okay, so they will be full time. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think it's, I, as far as I stand, I think it's important, you know, that uh, the county's com computer system, I, you know, I'm happy with a Chevy. We don't need a Cadillac, so I hope we're working towards a Chevy and not a Maserati or something. So I, <laughs> no, we're not. We are, um, we are taking the path like a lot of other businesses and other governments have done in terms of moving to the cloud because it just makes more sense not to focus on the actual nuts and bolts of the system if somebody else can do it for you. You're just renting time on their system. It's, it's. And Councilman, I, I would say what we're trying to build is a Ram truck. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's a workhorse because right now the, the things going down periodically and the departments, I think you heard it from some of the elected officials, they're upset if they're trying to use the system and it can't stay up. And that's a function of the fact that the platform needs to change. Yes, and I, I see those outages on my on my email, so I know it's been a problem, so. Okay. Keep going. <clears throat> All right, so if I think we were done with this. Um, like, actually, let me go back to this one slide where it says departmental demand. So to Councilman Brazel's question, the monies that we approved in October, if you see SSI in the middle, that top row middle column, and Microsoft Azure, that's what those costs were around. Those are ongoing projects within the IT department uh, to try and stabilize our platform. Outside of that, there are other projects that still go on. And outside of that, there's business projects that are still going on that monies need to be expended for and that I need to come up uh, before the council to get approved. Does that help a little bit? Okay. So this is just to give you a cross-section across all the departments in the county about the ones. Uh, I'm on the next slide now that talks about departmental applications. Uh, 
a cross-section across the county of all the departments that have asked for and been upgraded in the last five years since I've been here. Right? So it's a majority of the departments, all either without or with older software that has required some of the attention of the department, the personnel in the department. Simon, does that, when you do other departments, does that go on your budget or does that go on their budget? Uh, it, it depends. For most of the general fund uh, departments, it comes out of the IS budget. IS department? Okay. For the, some of the special funds, we actually pay for it. Uh, this is gotcha. something we've been moving to, and then we actually build them back for the charges. Okay. Uh, so while we're meeting all that departmental demand, uh, and, and this is the point that Joanne kind of touched on a little earlier with personnel, with, with the FTE count of 27, <laughs> You can see over the last five years, we've actually hired more than the entire FTE count and had 39 people leave also for a variety of reasons, some retirement, some better opportunities, some uh, managed. Didn't work out. Didn't work out, right. And uh, this is the point Joanne was making. Across the region, you can see that there is a demand for the qualified personnel, and we're all fighting uh, to get <coughs> access to those personnel. And there is really no easy solution. Well, what, what is your view? Why are, they, why are people exiting, or what, what's, what's, there's a reason? So what do, you know, what, what do you think it is? I think it's just because uh, technology in general is such a demand for all organizations, right? I think everybody is trying to automate the systems, do stuff with technology that is faster than they could do it with manual processes, for example, right? And you need people to support all these things. And, and it's a nationwide, but definitely region-wide shortage. I mean, they're addressing it in STEM education, trying to guide more people in there trying to offer training for people without a traditional IT background so they can write software. Um, so across the board, there is the shortage. I mean, I guess it has something to do with pay, too, because that's why you're coming to us for more salary on this gentleman tonight, right? Or person, whoever right. it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and rising salaries are just a, a consequence of a shortage of resources. So revisiting the plan we talked about in 16, there were two. We wanted to address our aging infrastructure, and we wanted to address the talent and the hiring problem. And we tried to take a few steps. In 18, um, I've talked to the department and gotten approval to also focus on cybersecurity, which, as you know, is a constant um, <coughs> challenge for multiple organizations. And the more IT systems you have, and you've heard about all the hacking in various systems and the Equifax breaches and all of that, we can't, we can't not pay attention to this. So we need to uh, focus on that. And also, uh, the last point that I want to make around building and operating is the more stuff we buy and put in, there is more maintenance that goes along with it. Right? The more cars you have, the more maintenance you have to do on those cars. And if you don't do the regular maintenance on the cars, you're going to pay the price for that down the road. So we are diverting some resources internally, since we are not focusing on building and, and buying as much as we can, to focus on the operations part. So that's new in 18. So in summary, we're executing on the plan. We're still trying to get into the cloud as fast as we can. And um, I know I gave you some estimates right before that. We are managing our uh, vendor as close as we can. We need that performance to step up. Um, and it's taking a while. And we talked about the reasons why, because the business continues to have uh, needs. Um, operations in different departments has to go on. And we have to meet those challenges as uh, fires come up. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to have to come back to you if the need arises to mitigate risk that is uncontrollable. I mean, I, I cannot control when an engineer or two decides to leave. And if that happens, or if you have a risk of that happening, we need to take some steps to make sure that knowledge doesn't walk out the door with them. Or if I don't have enough room to back up the prosecuting attorney, I need to come and buy more 
storage for them to back it up because we haven't gotten to the cloud yet. So just to give you an idea of what you might continue to see in 2018, uh, some more approvals so that you're not surprised by it. Uh, the EOC is the green section in the middle. The ones with check marks, you, uh, I think in the last two council sessions, you already approved on the consent agenda. Uh, we talked about the prosecuting attorney. Their vendor is also trying to get into the cloud, so there might be some costs associated with that. The green lines are all around the emergency operations center and there's some large costs associated with that. And in the capital budget that we, uh, Joanne talked about earlier, we would like to get to those upgrades, but I don't think we're gonna have time to get to it, just because we continue to try to find time to work on the projects that we need to, but because of everything else going on, it's hard to uh, break people away to work on it. Councilman Brazel, can, can I just point out one of the samples, an example of something that Simon's dealing with. You'll see here it says prosecuting attorney Carpell hosted. We've already got in the budget a 16,000 per year. Well, the, the prosecutors now getting um, all this video in from all of the interrogations that are now taped and from the uh, body cameras that the officers are wearing and so the exponential change in the terabytes that have to be saved as a result of that is going to vastly increase this contract. We just met with the prosecutor today about it. And so things like that can't be anticipated. We don't necessarily know that in, as we go into a budget year that another police department in the community is going to put body cameras on, is going to start forwarding uh, you know, video to them. And so the number of terabytes that we have to save for five, 10, or 30 years, I think is the top one, is gonna go up exponentially. And when we have to save that stuff on our own system, it costs to, to do that. If we have to buy it as a service, it costs to do that. So the, the price of technology is overall coming down per, but it, it's still expensive and they aren't costs that we previously handled this way. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, if I could just add a thought. Uh, you know, when I first came here 15 years ago, we were still on POTS, right? Yes. A plain old telephone, telephone system. system. So, mm -hmm. so I've seen, you know, we've, we've made a lot of changes. And sometimes I've mentioned to you, I've gotten frustrated too, because it seems like, you know, everything's always, you know, we have to update, we have to do all this. Uh, when I, they, they gave me this presentation last week, it, it helped me under, understand a lot better what's been going on and what direction we're headed. But you know, if you really want to, if you really want to know the, from 10,000 feet, if you look at this thing from 10,000 feet, you know, we've talked the last several months that, that period from, uh, from 2012 to 2015, where we were actually spending less per resident at the end of that three-year period than we were at the beginning. I think the main reason for that is, is our technology. We haven't had to hire as many new people because every person we have does a better job today than they did 10 years ago because of the work that Simon and, and other people here at this table have done to try to keep us up to speed on the latest, uh, latest technology. So uh, whatever else you're thinking, keep, keep that in mind too. Anybody else got any questions or comments? I do. In, in order to ensure our, our workforce, is there any way we could do like a scholarship program and uh, sign a contract with them that they would come work for us when we're through with, when they're completing their education? Are you talking at the high school level or the college level? College here? level. So subsidize a student's college education. To guarantee that they would come work for us at, at a wage that they would agree to. Would that be financially feasible? I, I haven't thought through the numbers as much yet. Yeah, that's definitely an option. I mean, there's the, uh, I think the federal government has that service program, right? Where they'll actually Yeah, pay. it's called the Army. 
<laughs> the GI Bill. They pay for you to go to school and return for four years of service when you finish. <laughs> Mr. White, I think it depends on which school they're going to go to. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But that's something we'll look into it. And also okay. the idea, we've never given our employees contracts. But if, if we're at such a risk here that somebody could leave tomorrow with no advance notice and whatever, and you know, maybe we should consider uh, contracts that would require them to give us 60 or 30 days notice or something so that we're never uh, left holding the bag on that. Well, yeah. I was curious about from that standpoint, we're putting in to, so the person that we're approving tonight is we're hiring them it's not a contract deal. We're Correct. hiring them as a regular employee. Correct. So I'd realize it's more expensive to go out and contract an employee, but that's kind of what we're talking about. I'd um, rather not, but if but if, if we really have the kind of risk that, that we're talking about here. You also attempted to contract. So when he mentioned to you that he's gone out earlier this year with a consultant to help try and recruit, that was a sort of trial and error contract-to-hire situation, and we didn't have any other options. The market is just extremely competitive and yeah. incredibly tight. We are trying all options, and we'll keep doing it. Okay. Councilman White, I do want to mention that we actually have an internship program where we have interns that work in uh, the IS department, uh, and we have one in GIS and one on the help desk side that, um, depending on how well they do, it offers them some continuity to fill some of the roles that we have. Okay. And then I'm also working with the uh, University of Missouri around some of their cyber education, cyber security education. They are going after some federal grants to set up a cyber security program. So talking to them about whether we could have uh, some of their students actually spend some time with us. And obviously it's, uh, there's no guarantees after that. We don't have cyber security positions uh, identified. But if they could offer us some continuity and some um, labor, uh, that would benefit both parties, right? It would benefit the university, the student, and the county. Okay. So we're taking a few steps in those directions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Since we don't have anything else, I'm motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's take a break till meeting starts at 7.